Hello, I'm Thomas Carruthers. I'm Will Leggett. And today, Will, we are, I believe this is the start. Uh, this is the, uh, I believe, let me double check. I believe this is the beginning. Um, yes, this is the beginning of your, your block of 13 choices. Um, will, due to uh, college and the like, uh, will be uh, lessening his podcast duties um, over the coming uh, months. And so what better way, we're calling it a farewell for now. Um, ooh, pardon me. Um, and so what better way uh, to bid Will farewell for now than to let him without, with full carte blanche, or as, uh, what is it in 22 Jump Street? I'm giving you, <laughs> he gave us full Cape Blanche to do whatever we wanted. Um, very funny joke. Um, Will gets to pick 13 films, and uh, I, I, I failed at every turn to get in a movie that we both enjoy that I wanted to do for some time. Uh, I've, I've failed at every turn to try and get them in. Um, so you, most of the, some of these, um, basically, some of them are ones that we do that we do both enjoy. Yeah. Some of them that I've seen when I was a child and I've thought about since. Uh, this is my movie taste. This is. Yeah, and um, it, very, very eclectic. And we're kicking off with with a film that we always touted as our, what would be our 250th episode. Uh, it's ended up as our 150th episode. Oh, well, that's excellent. That's it. And uh, basically, it, 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 it's click. So I'll see you tonight at the swim meet. Uh, I gotta go to that. Yes. I'm just kidding. I'll be there. That's my boy. That's my boy. You're not my dad. Like there's not enough time in the day. I need you to come up with a major design proposal. I'm 4th of July with the kids this weekend. When I get back, I'm all over it. How about Schwartz on? No, no, no. But the kids have been talking about camping with you all year. Does it ever seem that life is out of control? Can we watch Dragon Tales, Daddy? If I can turn the TV on. That's the ceiling pin. <laughs> hey, hearty har har. What if you could solve everything? I'm looking for a universal remote control. Make my life a little easier, less complicated. Come in the back with me. About to rock your world. With the push of a button. No one else in the world has one. Just point. Click. Um, a movie that you love, Will, and that you've tried to make me watch for years, and have always sold it to me as... No, 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 no. It's really good. You don't understand. It's really, really good. Um, I, my knowledge of Click really didn't go far beyond the image of Adam Sandler farting in David Asseloff's face. And so I thought it was pretty bottom of the barrel stuff. And I made that assumption. Um, Everybody sleep and relax. We all turn the stinking volume down. This summer, you wanted a universal remote control that remote controls your universe. Cool. Give me a break, Michael. You're a big boy. I'm so tired of having this argument. Mm -hmm. I just don't think it's a lot to ask. I got ghost stories, charades, the dishes. Let's skip the whole fight. Let's skip the whole fight. For me to do those documents, that's, that's going to take me months. And you better get started. <laughs> Wow, I got a big headache. What, I was a hip where I trained or something? I didn't see anything. This thing's broken. It's fast forward on its own. I missed the whole Dragon Tales era. Adam Sandler. However, Will, Will you, you do greatly love it. So, so why don't you tell us, what, what is it about Click that uh, clicks for you? Oh, what's this? Let's slow things down for a better look. I know it could. Click. Playing some catch? Actually, we're playing some drop, because Ben hasn't caught one yet. <laughs> you gotta keep your eye on the ball, kid. <laughs> hey, uh, I mean, I'm tempted to say this is my favorite Adam Sandler movie. 
genuinely. Um, yeah. I, I really, I, I've always loved it. I remember the first time we watched this was, uh, we went, the family went over to see uh, my aunt and uncle and cousins down in the South. Um, and this had just come out on Sky Movies or something, and we all sat down and watched this. I was uh, pre-10 at the time. I was probably seven. Yes, so, it came out in 2006. So Sky Movies time would have been your about yeah, seven year, I guess. Yeah. Uh, it's a great movie to watch for a seven-year-old. Um, and and then that from that day on, I thought, I'm going to be an architect. Which I, I was going to say, the minute that yeah. it became an architect, I thought, oh, there we go. That's why there you that's go. one of the reasons. <laughs> yeah and it's it's a, one of my favorite architecture movies mm. um yeah no i think it's just it's it's got a great cast it, it's got it does. a really really I, it's i i've not seen a story like this done before i think it's a, a retelling That's of fully movie. untrue but you've <laughs> yeah. seen it you've seen yeah. this you've seen this story told many 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 times well. I, <laughs> but i think it's a very cool and wacky way to do it um, and, and I think besides all the, it, it's got a mix of all of the types of comedies. You've got slapstick, you've got um, some just cringe toilet humour, which I, I enjoy every now and again. But you've got some great lines, you've got some great delivery of mm. lines. Uh, and you've got, um, aside from that, a really heartwarming story uh, that really does hit you. Mm. Um, let's talk about Frank Karachi. Uh, a phrase that nobody's ever said before. Uh, he directed this movie, uh, and he also directed my favourite. Um, that's not true. My favourite Adam Sandler movie is, without a doubt, The Water Boy. Uh, he did direct The Water Boy. Oh, did he? Uh, he did direct The Water Boy. But um, <laughs> my favourite Adam Sandler movie is definitely um, Punch Drunk Love, which is a movie I presume you've never seen. Well, um, it's by my favourite director, Paul Thomas Anderson. Very, 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 very good. He is, an, is a man with anxiety uh, who falls in love with Emily Watson whilst trying to uh, get away uh, from the. Basically, yeah, he had phone sex uh, with a with a with a with a phone sex what person, uh, and it turns yeah. out that and then they obviously tried to swindle him, and uh, he's it's all actually run by Philip Seymour Hoffman as a mattress salesman. Uh, great movie, love Punch and Love, yeah. Mas masterpiece, great film. Uh, but he also, but Frank Caracci did direct his second movie after a movie called Murdered Innocence, mm. starring the nobody you've ever. Oh no, 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 no! Starring Frank Caracci as Wacko on Bus, and everybody else on the IMDb doesn't have a picture. Uh, so that's always a good sign but he did then direct in 1998 my second favourite Adam Sandler movie The Wedding Singer, love Wedding Singer uh, that's probably my favourite of the of the, of the uh, well it's weird to say genuine Sandler movies but of the movies that people think of when they Adam Sandler those 90s string of comedies I've never been a Waterboy fan I recently watched Happy Gilmore and I really really enjoyed Happy Gilmore actually um, really liked Happy Gilmore got a great, great Ben Stiller I mean, yeah, very nice look. He then directed the Steve Coogan, Jackie Chan, uh, Around the World in 80 Days, which I've just clicked on and found out is two hours long. I watched um, that last week. Did you? <laughs> yeah. Well, for, for those uh, watching, I've just come out of uh, isolation. I've done very well, the, the whole thing. And then I go and play tennis and I get a message saying, yeah, I'm positive. Um so I've had to isolate. So that's what you get for trying to be healthy. But I've, I've not had the COVID. You'll be happy to know. I'm and who played that. Queen Victoria, Will, in Around the World in 80 Days? Oh, so, I mean, straight away, you want to say Judy Dench, but it's got to be... It, oh, it's... Is it Miriam? Um, it was Kathy Bates. Oh, of course. It Who's is. credited as Balloon Man? I don't know. Richard Branson. <laughs> and finally, who's credited as Prince Happy? I do know. Oh, oh. Um, it's, it's, it's a quite a well-known actor. Um, yeah, it's called I did not... Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> very well known. Uh, yeah. And do you want to know what the Frank Caracci credit was? He, like, he's, he's very, he's Hitchcock at Frank Caracci. In this, he was Angry Dapper Pedestrian. 
<laughs> so that's that. And John Cleese played uh, Grizzled Sergeant. Um, there we go. So, uh, and then he directed Click, and then he's made some just abysmal movies. Zookeeper, Here Comes the Boom, I Didn't Like Blended, The Ridiculous Six. And in 2017, he made a TV miniseries called The 13th Jockey. Conor McGregor decides to become the face of a horse of a horse racing with an experienced but hilarious coach. John Lovitz was his trainer. I don't know whether this is real or fake, um, but he did make Click. Um, so would you say unequivocally that this is probably your favourite Sam the World? I think I would. I think I would. Yeah. Well, uh, some people agree with you. Uh, let's do YouTube comments. Yeah. They hid how depressing the movie actually is. I don't normally cry at movies, but this, this one got me. You did, you did say, uh, get ready to cry. I didn't cry. I thought it was a little bit over the top. I mean, I guess that's the nature of the beast. Has a great message. Family first. Thank you. Um, this movie spent changed my life. I never spent time with my family. And this movie made me realize how important it is to do it. And now I spend a lot of time with my family. Uh, so that's that's the... there. you go. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. <laughs> um, this movie doesn't deserve the negative reviews from critics. I always thought this was the best Adam Sandler movie. We just had that little conversation. And uh, finally, one of the best movies that critics completely roasted. Adam Sandler definitely isn't the greatest actor, but this movie is definitely one of the best. I, I, I think he is a very, very talented actor. He is. I mean, he's great. Yeah. Whether he be Uncut Gems or whatever. Uh, once the Katrina Unit one-star review, Connor, click off, please, now. The idea was great. I grant you that. It always was. From Faust to It's Wonderful Life, the what if, the second chance, the Jerry Springer sensibility that corrodes, diminishes, and ultimately destroys what it should have been, what should have been a lovely movie is what I took with me as I rushed out of the theatre. I think that we should all know by now that technical wizardry is not nearly enough and the audiences are smarter than what the smart-ass marketing experts seem to think. And this, is this movie making money? I don't know. Just when I thought I could like an Adam Sandler movie, I have tried, honest, I have tried to like Adam Sandler. Granted, he was on SNL. And when you think of the quality of that programme lately, that's not saying much. And I've tried to watch several of his movies, including Punch Drunk Club, and none of them ever done anything for me. Now there is one more to add to the list. Click. A bad movie. I just returned from seeing this movie and I was not impressed. It appears the movie was aimed at an audience of 15 year old boys. The movie premise was good, but the writing quickly degenerated into cheap sex jokes and very little else. I wonder how much money they had to throw at Christopher Walken to get him to damage his career by allowing himself to be associated with this forgettable piece of cinematic trash. I was not impressed by the inclusion of the questionable talent of David Hasselhoff and Henry Winkler. Pause. Pause. <laughs> questionable talent does not make me possible. Actually, not Hasselhoff. I thought he was great in this. If this is one of his best... This is, like, this is like a really, really good performance. Yeah. This is how I imagine he was in 9 to 5 in the stage show. Yes, I saw Bradley Walsh. Uh, no, I didn't. I saw, what's his name? He's not Bradley Walsh. He's the he, guy who looks like Bradley been. Walsh. Who yeah. I saw in Chi Chi Bang Bang. He's Cockney. Oh, God. And I saw him go in through the stage door. Brian. 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 I walked past him and, and with, my, with my ex and I said, oh, he's famous, but I don't remember his name, so we can't say hello. Um, okay, okay, we're going to Google it. Uh, Phil, about David Hasselhoff, Will. Um, yeah, no, I, I actually will change my mind, and I said this is my favourite David Hasselhoff performance. It's also one of my favourite Walkins, but we'll do that tangent in a bit. Uh, but yeah, he's great in Hop, I think. <laughs> That's a good good surprise Hop. He does a lot of cameos nowadays, doesn't he? Rather than Ryan Connolly. Ryan Connolly, that's it. I did, uh, I did um, see Bonnie Langford and Brian Connolly. Uh, I didn't see Louise Redknapp. Uh, she was ill the night, uh, but the understudy was very, very good. Oh, very good. Uh, it's not a good sign when you're when you're ill for the Saturday night show, but I guess that's 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 Louise for you. <laughs> and Amber Davis was very, 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 very good. 
Um, oh, I, overall, I just, I really enjoyed 9 to 5, I have to say. Um, yes, um, we are very likely to be doing it this year. Well, this year. well uh, by this time, you will have done it. Oh, wow. Wow, we're doing our decision meeting tomorrow morning. Ooh, very exciting. exciting. Uh, we've got a couple, one more uh, one-star review. This movie blows like Katrina. This movie was really horrible. I can't put it more accurately. I'm an Adam Sandler fan. I have read the people think this started as a comedy, and when they decided to make it a drama, yeah, right. I think they started as a comedy and failed so miserably that it's difficult to tell exactly what it is. The gags weren't funny. The situations were all poorly developed so that I had never really cared anything about Adam Sandler's character. You obviously disagree. And I think I disagree. Oh, I should reveal this now. I like I rather liked Click. I, I rather liked Click. I rather liked Click. Turned into Dudley and Peter. Peter and Dudley. Dudley. I, 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 yesterday I found um, in a charity shop four stories by Alan Bennett and I greatly enjoyed sitting in a Starbucks drinking an iced latte um, in my head reading um, it was about a famous masseuse to the stars and he was like and I usually arrive early at funerals to avoid the general glad handling of the reverend and it's just I very much enjoyed um, <laughs> reading that uh, it was no, very good. That and, it, and it includes uh, Lady in the Van which I've never read but did see and thought it was perfectly fine and uh, Alex Jennings is of course He's excellent superb. Uh, which takes us on to um, you were telling me how much you like Click. You said before, I'm going to be optimistic and say you're going to give it a seven or an eight. I said six or seven. Did you? Sure did. I'd say six, yeah. That's good. I'm glad, I'm glad I own it. I don't know when I'll watch it next, but I'm sure, I, I'm sure it'll would be... You, would you watch it with the family? With the family like that? No. Oh. I, I, I think they would. No, it's just, I don't know. There's, I don't, I just, there are, I mean, we can do it now. I'm just never going to pick, the only reason I would pick this is if it's not d November or December, because there is no way on earth I'm ever watching Click over Scrooge or It's Wonderful Life. Um, sorry, it's just not going to happen. It, it, you know, it's not going to crack my top 30 comedies. It's not going to crack any list. But I rather liked it, and I'm perfectly fine that I spent a pound fifty on the Blu-ray. Very good. Very and, good. Uh, it's in the it's in the collection, uh, which takes us to ten minutes stretch. Um, take the lead, Will. Take the lead, please. Well, uh, I've gone for um, three minutes stretch. So I've gone for the first one, going into Bed Bath and Beyond and meeting Morty for the first time, and yes. having the whole. Uh, <laughs> Let's do it now. One minute. Let's, Let's pause Let's ten it. minutes stretch. Let's do the walking tangent. Let's do it. This isn't our first walking, but it or is it? I I don't remember. So oh, no, we no, did wedding, wedding crashes. Wedding crashes. A sailor. Um, <laughs> oh, what a film! What a film! <laughs> great film. Uh, great walking. And uh, yes, no, I I I I I adore Christopher Walken. You on the wedding crashes episode, I believe you made the statement that. Um, uh, he shouldn't have won his Oscar for the Deer Hunter. He should have won it for this. I don't know. <laughs> don't know about that. Um, oh, and we did Annie Hall as well, which of we course did. that's the great. Sometimes I like to drive at night and imagine. Wrong, that's more. That's more spacey. That's more. <laughs> have you seen Peter Serafinovich do Kevin Spacey? Very, very good impression. <laughs> so, it's really good acting class, and it's like I remember my lines and maybe. If you follow me, I can teach you a few things. I went on a real bad Kevin Spacey YouTube loophole the other day. Oh, no. I just did. I basically watched all of American Beauty in clips on YouTube. Um, <laughs> I should have just grabbed my Blu-ray. But um, this is the thing. Too much of American Beauty is too good to, to, to ignore it. Annette Benning is just having the time of her life. And it's just incredible in it. <laughs> Honey, don't be weird. Um, when, when, she, when she's at the shooting range and the guy comes up, you're great. And he goes, I don't know about that, but I just love shooting this gun. <laughs> I love Annette Benning. I do American love American Beauty. Beauty. Everybody watch American Beauty. Will Legator, 2021. 
And um, <laughs> but um, <laughs> about Kevin Spacey, Christopher Walken, um, I found him that he's he's very much enjoying himself, it's, it's, and he's yeah. And I think he's you can tell he's having a lot of fun on set. Mm. If this is your classic zany, wacky um, Walken role. Um, oh. With all of the little mannerisms and the little noises, it's great. Sneaky. <laughs> um, uh, it was very enjoyable, especially when it came back. I thought, oh, he's doing it again. Okay, <laughs> same sneaky. Um, <laughs> but yes, no, you talked about cast. Very, very stacked cast, I have to say. I, I didn't know that uh, uh, Winkler was in it. Uh, yes. it, was a, it was a happy surprise. Julie Kavner, obviously, the voice of Lisa Simpson and many, many other things in her life. But, uh, I believe it may be maybe Marge Simpson. I thought she was Lisa. Get, get, your, get your Simpson trivia correct. No, 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 no. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. dear, oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Um, oh, you both picked the same kind of cheese. Oh, oh. Have you thought about adapting it into a film? And... Um, no, I, I, yeah, it's Julie Governor. Uh, Henry Winkler is delightful. And of course, a very, very early role for Jonah Hill. Yes, yes. He'd, I checked, I, I thought, is this his first film? And he, and, he, and he is in 40 Year Old Virgin prior to this. So he is uh, already in the Apatow Sandler world, um, where he just doesn't understand the eBay store. It's like, okay, but I want to <laughs> buy these shoes. I want to buy these shoes. Um, People always like, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, j- lovely Johnny Hill. Great cast, great cast. There, I have to, have to say. Um, which takes us into back to ten minutes stretch. Uh, yeah, so we're meeting Morty for the first time. Yes, very enjoyable, very enjoyable. Into the uh, any anything anything else? Well, any any other nominations for ten minutes stretch? Uh, yeah, I've, I've gone for the sort of the the the, the main menu. Uh, bit as well. Yeah, entering right. the remote world, which yes. doesn't. I think it looks a bit shit. It, it, I don't know whether it's a big check. I don't know whether they needed to minimise yeah. the effect. It it felt very. Look at all this technology. This isn't yeah. just a com- This isn't a cheap comedy. This is a big budget comedy thing. Yeah. And and it, it looks a bit. It it doesn't look terrible, terrible, but it doesn't look great. Um, but uh, I, uh, I, but it's very funny. Yeah. yeah. And at my, my last ten minutes, I've gone for the um, the sexual harassment talk going into the hotel pitch, and, and yeah, I think that is a, a lovely, lovely little stretch. The sexual harassment seminar was one of the funniest things. I, I just didn't expect to seem that great. It was hilarious. Hasselhoff was just knocking it out of the park every single <laughs> line. You know, I told a woman she was really sexy, and I was technically involved in sexual harassment is made me <laughs> laugh out loud and I was sat alone. There is also homosexual harassment and the picture harassment. of the naked man <laughs> behind him <laughs> massaging. Made me again made me laugh out loud. You know the the making him tiny and changing his voice not not too funny but the, you know that's the comedy I, I like the bit where he throws his arms out. That's very funny but he's tiny. He's like, bah, bah, bah. Um, but uh, yeah, Hasselhoff knocking it really, really good yeah. performance in this. Uh, I don't think we Thank could. David Hasselhoff. What are David Hasselhoff's other credits? Obviously, Baywatch, um, Knight Rider, obviously. Uh, then I, he's... All I can think of is Hop at them. <laughs> you really got you really hate... up on you hate Hop. Uh, what well, when it came out, it was during my. He's going to grab his Hop DVD phase. What, you're, you're, I, is it a phase or are you still in it? Uh, I'm in and out. I'm in and out. I like to get into. I I I I'm a big fan of uh, get getting Sarah Greek. Marshall and getting to the Greek. I enjoy. Yeah. Uh, so I, I like I like Russell Brand. Yeah. That. Yeah. Uh, he was in a movie called Welcome to Hollywood where he played David Hasselhoff. Uh, he was in. Uh, he was in an episode of The West Wing where he played David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Obviously, years and years of Baywatch, Dr. Jekyll and uh, Hyde, Jekyll and Hyde, the musical, which is pretty terrible. Uh, Sheikh, <laughs> I've seen that many times. Uh, Sheikh Zulu, the Citadel, is the true story of the legendary African warrior and his struggle to unite his people. Oh, Jesus. Is that David also in blackface? No, oh, thank God. God. Thank God. No. Oh. <laughs> thank God. However, he does... Play somebody called Mungo Prentice. 
Um, he is white in this movie, thank God, <laughs> but uh, it still doesn't look good. Still. <laughs> Um, he was in. He, he is obviously the German coach in uh, dodgeball. Very fun. Yeah. Um, Night Rider. They brought back. Um, he was in the a show called The Young and the Restless. David Hasselhoff. He played in Hop. Yep. Uh, he was in an episode of Sons of Anarchy where he played a guy named Dondo. Uh, he, oh, he was called Owen in The Christmas Consultant. Eesh. Uh, uh, and then he's got this new show, Hoff the Record. Did you ever watch Hoff the Record? Really? I didn't. I didn't. Which was like a, supposed to be like an episodes thing, I think. You know, where it's like he's playing himself, but it's funny. Um, remember when he uh, was a judge on Britain's Got Talent? I do. I do remember that. Um, he was also a judge. Oh no, this is a no. This is a movie. Last night, a DJ saved my life. David Hasselhoff is a diehard thrill seeker and Ibiza's top 80s DJ. Clueless to the fact that a new decade has dawned. Disco is out. A new club scene is in. He recruits his much younger girlfriend, <laughs> Jesus Christ, <laughs> to help Kim Tiddy to help him keep up with the times. But both are thrown into a comical spin with this, with, with, with his estranged daughter unexpectedly moves in. Unlike the demure schoolgirl he remembers, <laughs> Jesus Christ, he, Penny has a wild streak that rivals even his father's and a crush on an unsavory suitor to boots, Shane Ritchie Jr. Now the, now the cad must become the dad. But how will a badly behaved parent still stuck in the 80s keep his modern free-spirited daughter in line? That sounds like David Hasselhoff wrote it. <laughs> That's synopsis. <laughs> Shane Ritchie Jr. Wow, Jesus Christ. Very good. Very uh, good. He was in Sharknado 4. He was, yeah, uh, he was in... Oh, he was... He played the mentor in the Baywatch remake, so he had a cameo in that. I never yeah. watched I never watched Baywatch. Uh, but, uh, yeah, he's, he's, he's been around as David. But this is, yeah. def- this is like an actual really good performance. I think after doing that list, I think we can agree that this is David Hasselhoff's greatest movie performance. Without a shadow of a doubt. Um... Any other 10-minute stretches, one? That's that's my 10-minute uh, stretches. Yeah, that's about me done as well, I have to say. Um, my specific favourite parts, um, you know, it's a cheap gag. I love the reveal of Rachel Dratch, who, again, I didn't realise was in this. Um, but And I don't know whether to put it in change or question. I just feel sorry for Rachel Dratch, because she's also the, quote-unquote, ugly, horrible secretary in the... Uh, the movie that I love, Down With Love, with Hugh McGregor and Renny Zellweger. She's just the doughty, dowdy, and secretary. And then she's revealed to be transgender uh, in the uh, in the in the 17, 10 years later reveal. She's yes. now Alan. The uh, oh, 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 and then the, the, yeah, the big, big, big comedy laugh. I, I it, basically you, you're not a thirty rock person, are you? Will? No. She's basically they filmed the pilot with her in the second lead female role, and it just didn't work. And so they recast her with Jane Krakowski, who was an excellent choice, and they changed the character um, for the better. Jenna is one of the most funny, funniest characters of all time. But like to make, it, to make up for it, they have Rachel Dratch pop in then and again as a, pardon me, as a bunch of different characters. And every time she pops on, you just feel bad because the show ran for seven seasons and was a huge success. And uh, you just you just feel a little bad for her <laughs> every single time she appears. She's um, great, great in this. She is great in this. Uh, she's great in everything. Love Rachel Bird. Which takes us into um, a great architecture joke. Loved pulling out the atrium and him just jamming in the pencil yeah. to get the water drain. Uh, very enjoyed that. I loved... Uh, I don't know if it's realistic. I loved it. And your wife's type rocking bod. Enjoy that. <laughs> and it but comes it, back at the end in the, it, in the little card. It does. <laughs> I, I always thought that the most touching uh, written phrase in, in, in movie history was um, no man is, no man is uh, a failure who, who has friends. Uh, thanks for the wings, Clarence. But I now think it's P.S. Your wife's <laughs> type rocking body still drives me crazy. <laughs> Uh, very much enjoyed Terry Crews' little appearance, singing yep, uh, singing uh, one of my favourite songs, 
uh, working for the weekend. I really, I love a boy. Uh, I actually quoted that at the end of an at the end of an actual college essay because it was all about working and it was all about like the stress and it was about death of a salesman and Glen Gary Glen Ross. And then my final statement was, um, you know, everybody, everybody, but in so many ways, uh, the the money and the game blinds all of our lead main, all of our lead, lead male characters to actually what they could possibly be having in a family and a good time. As Loverboy said in that big hit, everybody's working for the weekend. <laughs> um, everyone's watching. I've, I've actually got that in my one of my minutes. Uh, it it is a, a staple sort of meme, if you if you will, in the Legata household. We love that little clip of Terry Crews in the car. <laughs> with a, with a bit where he sticks his tongue out. Because <laughs> then, because obviously no one really liked the song. So when he's muted, I knew that he was doing uh, dress it with the line where he's like, everyone's dressing. And I saw him going, D -d -d -d. and I was like, oh, he's, doing, he's still singing, the, he's still singing yeah. the song. I don't know what lyric um, the tongue out is supposed to be. <laughs> but, uh, you know, go, go for it, Terry, go yeah. for it. Uh, I loved Janine's 90s outfit, uh, Bart Simpson. I'm so <laughs> horny. Uh, I'm a big, I mean, I, I love Jennifer Coolidge. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know if you're a, are you a Christopher Guest person, Will? No, no. You, I, I, again, this is one of those things where I maybe should be doing uh, 30 movies because you would literally, you're missing out on, I, I, I do believe some of like unequivocally movies that you would love, Will. Uh, it, all of the Christopher Guest movies are just hilarious. Best in show, uh, best in show. I mean, Waiting for the Government, uh, one of my favorite comedies ever. Uh, but we are both legally blonde people, probably at this point, more so the musical than the actual film. Oh, oh I, I, I would always say the musical over the film, yeah. But the, the film is... is, is the film's still great, yeah, I mean, we love yeah. Reese. Uh, yeah. Paulette, you're in the supply closet! <laughs> well, that's, that's, not, that's not Jennifer Coolidge, that's... Um, uh, oh, 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 Faye? Oh, oh. Anyway, the woman, who's, the woman who plays it in the MTV. You're in the supply Ireland, it's called Celtic Moods. You sound um, like um, Robin Williams' brother in Mrs. Doubtfire. His name is Harvey Firestein. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought you would never ask. Oh, look at this thing we've got here. Oh, look at this, uh, look at this uh, little thing we've got here. Match maker, match maker, make me your match. Oh, what's the difference? What's it? <laughs> Shelley McLean and Joe Gallant. What's the difference? Some Dutch tape and some red hair dye. Uh, very much enjoyed. Everyone uh, watches that. Oh, Everybody one of watches my favourite films ever. Really. I love Mrs. Stop. Oh. No, love Robin Feinstein. Love Robin Williams. Uh, yeah. Gone too soon. <laughs> what are you laughing for? Uh, <laughs> bring the mood down. And uh, and I also enjoyed the therapy. Good one, Dana. <laughs> the, the therapist. <laughs> yeah. that was, it's just a great gag. Very funny. I, two other great gags. The, the the bit the scene where I was like, oh my god, this is really good, was early on, and it was when Sandler's in Hasselhoff's office, and there was just like back to back bangers, and it was Sandler going, you know, it's all right, I'll have other dunes in my life. It's just a really funny throwaway line, and then Hasselhoff going, you know, they're Japanese, they can't wait for their fish to cook, and I thought these these are just <laughs> great great lines, and I thought this is this is really good. I thought it was a bit, you know, there was moments as it went on that there was some troughs of, oh, there's no, there's not been a good gag for a while. But, uh, but that was like, oh, this is, this is pretty good. <laughs> yeah. uh, and also Bed Bath & Beyond is a great, that's just a great, great, we're obviously yeah. British, but I know of Bed Bath & Beyond and just, that's just a really funny gag. <laughs> that what is the beyond? It's Christopher Walken. It's just Christopher Walken. As the angel of death. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's, what a scene, what a scene. Oh. Um, and also, I don't know whether it's a specific favourite part. I want to talk... Right, so this movie was nominated for an Oscar well. Do you know what Oscar it was nominated for? Really? I would definitely say music. No. Oh, okay. Oscar nominee for Best Achievement in Makeup. Well, yeah, with the, the fat suit. Well, this is the thing. I'd have to disagree because... <laughs> I think the, the the first facts, the first like when he when he's when he's like walking around his house, it 
it looks like he's been CGI'd. It does. But that's just the first thing. lighting. Yeah, yeah. And well, let me see what else what, what it beats. Uh, did oh, it win? No, it didn't win. Pan's oh. Labyrinth won, which is uh, an uh, excellent <laughs> choice. Um, <laughs> right choice was made there. Uh, and Thelma Schumacher did win. Thank God for uh, editing. Uh, anytime, anytime Thelma wins. Yeah, happy. Um, uh, this was the departed year, wasn't it? Yeah, this was the departed. Um, because I, I'd have to say that makeup looks pretty bad. And also, the young makeup on Henry Winkler and Julia Kavner is terrifying. And she, lo she, looks, she looks like Thing. She looks like Thing 1 and Thing 2 from, from the cat and the hat. From, for like a good five minutes, I was like, who do they look like? And I realised it was... The, uh, the old oh. makeup as well mm. on a, at the wedding was... Uh... The old makeup on her is pretty bad at the wedding. I, I think the old makeup for the sad Henry Winkler scene is very good. I think that's that's really the best. Yeah, yeah, that's very good. And then the sandless, the sandler is just a bit of grey in the hair. So I, I, again, I'm not sure there. But so <laughs> um, I thought, yeah, I, I thought it was a typical Oscar thing of this has the most. It's like any it's time, the most, the, yeah, yeah. This has the most makeup, so it needs to be nominated. This movie has the most editing, so it. it, it are you know, are it, you on about um, Avengers? No, they've never been nominated. I don't think they've ever been nominated no. for editing. Thank God. Mm. Thank God. Um, they're my weirdly specific favourite parts of the yeah. film. Your, your specific, more general parts of the I've got a few. I, I love um, the Prince Habibu scene. I think that's very, <laughs> very good. The bit where he scratches his ear for him. Yeah. You get it. <laughs> Still itchy. Hubba Bubba is chewing gum. That's <laughs> great. Chewing. Great stuff. Um, when he goes up to the, the swimming pool and he's like, I don't know my dad. <laughs> but then he turns around and the whole family's there. That's a great gag. Um, walking with the xylophone, dancing around. Just the having thing. a great time. <laughs> He's loving it. Um, the, when he throws the ball in little o O'Doyle's face. That's good, that. yeah. That's good, That's a good one. Um, and then the, the farting scene. I do very much like the slap and his reaction. Like, uh, where he's on fire. I, yeah, I... To, I I, I think my... Is, is there shit in my cup? <laughs> is there shit in my dinner? Uh, does he actually think somebody's shit in his dinner? I don't know. No. Why wouldn't he just think, have you farted? <laughs> Why is his first reaction? Well, we do know that Rachel Dratch spits in uh, Adam Sandler's burgers. Yeah, James Earl Jones tells <laughs> James Jones Was that James... Crazy. This is a question. Was that James... I didn't check the credits. I'm going to check this now. Was that James Earl Jones or was that somebody doing a James Earl Jones impression? You, Phil, I'm going to do this. Uh, 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 Will, you're not filling. I'm not, I'm not. It doesn't say. It doesn't, it doesn't say. Um, so there we go. You can stop filling. Not Thank that you, you did. Um, but uh, yes, I, 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 I enjoyed that. Um, which takes us into Soundtrack Corner. Yeah. Pretty nice soundtrack. Uh, it's a bit, I, it's, it's typical 90, typical 90s, 2000s comedy. We're just going to throw yeah. in a bunch of songs that people like. Yeah. You know, I think that's perfectly fine, I guess, here. Uh, and uh, and they're all great. They're, they're all pretty great songs. So uh, yeah. we do it two ways. We do uh, best song full stop and uh, best use of a song. Will, what's your best song full stop? Um, my book, my best song full stop is the one that um, he's singing in the car. Working for the weekend, my yeah. lover one. Everyone's. I, I also think um, hold the line is is great. Um, the, the best. The better Toto song. A lot of people love Africa, but Hold the Line. No, hold the Line's better, yeah. It's the better uh, uh, Roseanne's also very good. Um, I, 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 I really enjoy I'm Gonna Live Till I Die by Frank Sinatra. Very much enjoy that song. Uh, and, and also, I've... Oh, go on. A rendition by... Um, oh, I'm thinking of a different one. I'm thinking of a different one. What we... What... What's the one that Walken sings as, as we walk, he walks into Beyond? He's singing. I don't it. know. It says here that it, uh, there's. Uh, I, I, I. It doesn't. It doesn't really say. Um, 
it doesn't. No, I'm sorry, Will. I, I don't have okay. that for it's, you. It's okay. Uh, I've also re I also really enjoy You Get What You Give. Great song, New Radicals. I mean, it's overplayed, I guess, uh, but still, still a great, great song. Best use of a song. Best use of a mm. song. Um, I, well, I've gone for the actual film score itself. Um, the, the score underneath the um, escape, well, running out of hospital in the rain, that scene, oh. I think is very, very, very moving. You actually, it's, it's strange. You find it a lot of, when, when I'm on my what, uh, rabbit holes on YouTube, search, uh, if, what, if I want to like, learn like a new song, um, you search what best or saddest movie scores of all time. And you get stuff like... Um, Chillers what, List. Yeah, Shinners is <laughs> one of my. Uh, it's one of the few ones that I can remember. So when it's sadly whenever when everyone says, "Oh, what plays a song?" I will most likely play the theme from Shinners List. It's very beautiful. Yes, uh, I mean, yeah. it's it's a bad it's bad phrasing because uh, it's not a comedy. But uh, Shinners List famously not a comedy. But uh, that is the go-to sad music I do when it's yeah. when it's comedy, yeah. uh, when when it's needed or whatever. Uh, but no, I think the uh, the underscore to that is 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 spectacular. I think it's very moving. And look, as you alluded to earlier, I most times when I watch that, I do cry. Um, mm. I I think it is such a good build-up to that, um, mm. and it it really does take a a different turn in the third act. So I think it's very very moving. Yes, I think, and 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 I think the the seeds are soon of of it being a drama, not a drama, but of it being a a, 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 a more dramatic uh, feature earlier on. It's not just comedy, 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 and then suddenly this outrageous, uh, this outrageously over top dramatic scene. I think I think the quieter moments are are there, um, and it and it helps and it pays off. Yeah, um, I, I I agree. What is, what's next on this little show we do? Uh, what's that? Uh, Will's favourite building or set? Is that oh, that's yes. a category we do? A um, well, I mean, let's just talk about architecture. That's great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, any of the little, uh, any what little? They're quite big. Any of the models that he makes, I think, are spectacular. I love well, his... the the one that he was making on on the night where he's really busy and he skips the dinner. That looks really nice with all the levels. The, the blue one. Mm. Yeah, um, that's quite relatable, actually, because that's what most architecture students do. They do everything on the night before. Um, but speaking of that, I, I very much like his little underground office. I want mm. that like with the little stairs coming down and then you've got your drawing desk and your, mm. it's, it, I, I, I like it's a that. lot better than um, George Bailey's just very messy living room where he's had to put everything. Getting ready for it. Haven't you learned that goddamn little tune yet? Daddy, daddy, how do you spell uh, frankincense? Uh, he's got the maths. Oh, it's easy. Zuzu, 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 Oh, James. Um, and of course, this has its own It's Wonderful Life moment where it's like, oh, you stupid car, I love you. It's a bit, it's a bit, it's not, it's a bit corny. I, I, I don't know. I don't think it's necessarily that. Great, great stuff. Yeah, it's great stuff, I guess. And uh, we 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 move on to best single minute. I I, I touched. I, I enjoy uh, the pool and all that sequence because it's all talking about getting getting us into the, the, the seriousness of it. And, and it is one of those horrible things, you know, and, and all that. And I and, and and a very sad single minute. I enjoy old Winkler. I enjoy uh, sad oh, old Winkler. <laughs> Also, let's be honest. Is he really busting out the coin trick to his fifty-year-old son and his and his third? I mean, it's cute, I guess, but come on, you're not busting that one out to like your fifty-year-old son to get him to a dinner. It's like, why don't I show you the trick? <laughs> uh, yeah, so I, I don't, I don't know about that, but um, yes, I, I greatly enjoy yes. for the most part. To that. Any other nominations that were missed? All? I yeah, I've also said saying saying goodbye to grandpa. I've I've worded it. It's oh, very sad. Yeah, uh, and I, I've put the escaping hospital uh, mm. lying in the rain. I think that's very touching. Yeah, yeah. I think what um, I also forgot there was a wedding in this, which I know you. you I do. Like. I do love you weddings. Like I actually have a few notes about the wedding, but anyway, we'll talk about that. <laughs> um, 
Uh, yes, I, I, I do. Uh, but it, yes, I like it. I like a good old big wedding. I, I, Godfather's still the best wedding. Um, it is. It is on my to do list. Like very high priority to go to a wedding with you. I, I adore weddings. They're the best things in the world. I, I, I just. I, and this is the thing. I've always said this should be our decade of weddings because the, the, you know, my love of weddings is largely based on pop culture. I have actually only ever been to two, um, you know, but they, and, and of those, I was, I was too young really uh, to drink and, and, and to enjoy the minutia of it. Yeah. And also it was like distant family, not, di not yeah. distant family, but. But well, well, when you're that age, you do just sit with your mum and dad and your grandparents. Yeah. Um, well, no, we danced, but we danced, but, um, but yeah, it was not distant family, but family where, the people that we knew were one table yeah and then it was and then everybody everybody else and i guess that's oh you know that's expected that it's somebody else's wedding um <laughs> and for you not to know every single person that is on that is coming and and i also i love if the speeches i mean i my my i am gonna be great at speeches and great as a father just need a woman now um the uh Got a great one from a friend the other day. Why don't you get it? Why don't you get yourself a donkey? It's not like you've got a woman to spend any money on. It's true. Um, where are we? <laughs> Same my sad, sad line. Best line. <clears throat> Best line, Will. What, what immediately jumps out to you? Oh, I, I've written down sneaky. <laughs> sneaky. Uh, yes, very enjoyable. Um, great. Voice over guy. Michael Jackson, the first man to clone himself, uh, is now suing himself for molesting himself. Yeah. Uh, very dark, but very, very funny. Um, and and, and uh, incorrect, because it's what, set in 2030, summer, is it? That was 2017. 2017, oh, there you go. Well, he's, he's uh, for our viewers watching at home, Michael Jackson died in 2011. Michael Jackson's dead? No. Um, I, I enjoyed uh, my boyfriend, the hardest boy in school. Yeah, he's going to be really hot when I burn his house down. Uh, is... Is, is, he re is he too over the top with A, the ginger kid and his daughter? <laughs> He's so mean to that ginger boy. He kills that he runs over his robot dog. He does. I think I can smell marijuana. <laughs> That's quite, yeah, like, it's just brutal. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, did you smoke crack, Daddy? I enjoyed that. Uh, any, any of your favourite lines? Will? I, I like it. Um when he's um, meeting Prince Habibu and he's like, sorry, I'm like some idiot in a red Lamborghini parked in my spot. <laughs> Prince Habibu drive red Lamborghini. Yeah. Ah, blue Ferrari, blue Ferrari. <laughs> blue Ferrari, it's great. It's great. Very, under very understandable mistake. Um, any, anything else, Will? Um, I love um, the uh, angel, I'm, I'm the angel of death. That's a good one. Just, just that line, just I'm I the angel of death. And I already mentioned two of my favourites. Yeah, Japanese. Uh, the, there's other sexual harassment lines. I was technically, I was technically sexually harassing somebody. Uh, it was very funny. And uh, yeah, the Japanese. They can't. They can't wait for their fish to cook. And, and well, um, Samantha, is that you? Uh, when did you get boobs? Same time you did, Dad. That's a, that's a... Um, we haven't said the name J Kate Beckinsale once. We haven't. And she's just delightful. She's wonderful in this. I. I you know, as a kid, I was a huge fan of the movie Van Helsing. <laughs> I used to watch Van Helsing all the time. I'm pretty sure that if I watched it now, it would literally not be, um, not hold up in any way, shape or form. Uh, I'm yet to watch... Like that. We can, um, Furry Vengeance, watched that about a month ago and just wasn't the same. Wasn't the same. No. Uh, I'm yet to watch the new Whit Stillman movie, uh, Love and Friendship, although I hear it's very, very good. Very excited for that. Uh, recently really gotten into Whit Stillman. Uh, but uh, yes, uh, obviously she's great. She's great in The Aviator. Uh, very much enjoying The Aviator. And she's great in Tiptoes, the movie where Gary Oldman gets on his knees and plays a dwarf. Um, have you heard about, have you ever seen Tiptoes, Will? Uh, no. I've never shown you the trailer for Tiptoes. Well, I want you to, we're pausing this episode. Will is now going to get up the trailer for Tiptoes and is going to watch it live on this podcast. So you've never, ever heard of this. I've never heard of it. 
Turn the volume up, Will, so I know where in the trailer you are. Carol and Stephen's life together was perfect. I've got to get going. Wait a second. <laughs> All right. Hey, baby. Hey, sweetie. I love you. There's one small problem. Here he comes. Hi, I'm Ralph. I'm his brother. We're twins. Are your parents? Um... Yeah. It can tear them apart. I think you're gonna let me know that everyone in your family's a midget. They're not midgets, Carol. Dwarfs. Whatever. Or bring them together. Hey. Peter what? Dinklage is also in it. A real dwarf. This is Stephen's father, Bruno, and his mom, Kathleen. And over behind the bar is Stephen's brother, Paul. Hi. You could have prepared us for this, don't you think? If you embarrass me, I'll never speak to you again. So just get it together. Um, it's rough. It's only the size of your heart that counts. <laughs> <laughs> you knocked up this great girl, and you didn't tell her that her baby's probably gotta be real. I'm not like you. We are so cute and cuddly. Cuddly. Well, a little wild. I never said the truth. Because you're not minutes around here. Holding on. My man can do what he wants to do. <laughs> Ready for an adult relationship. What is this man doing in the bathroom? I'll walk down the aisle. Ah, Stevens, he's a very lucky guy. Just help me. Just smart enough not to screw. It's just the beginning. There'll be rough patches, no doubt about it. Canal Plus and Langley Productions proudly present command performances from Kate Beckinsale, Matthew McConaughey, Patricia Arquette, and in the role of a lifetime, Gary <laughs> In the role of a lifetime. Oh, Gary Oldman. <laughs> well, that was excellent. Thank you very much. It's all right. Um, <laughs> we can throw a tip toes party. I, uh, I also noticed that she was in Absolutely Anything, which uh, with Simon Pegg and Monty Python. Mm. Which is actually what she's told her agent. I will be in absolutely anything. Oh, okay. It's a funny gap. There was a really funny yeah, joke. I didn't get it. I didn't it was funny. I went to cinema to see that. And how was it? Wasn't that wasn't that Terry Jones's like last film? Oh, maybe. no! Wasn't it Robin Williams's last film? Doesn't he voice the dog? Oh, he does. He does. It yeah, was. it was. It was his last film ever. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, Dennis the dog. And it was. And it was Terry Jones's last film because he passed, unfortunately. Um, he directed it. I tell a lie. Before he passed, he did um, appear in Carly Minogue, Absolutely Anything and Anything at All. Oh, that's uh, that's a song from the film <laughs> Absolutely Anything. So he was in the music video for. Uh, and, he, and Terry Jones, prior to his death, was the narrator of the 33-episode series The Legend of Dick and Dom. I, I adore... The Legend of Dick and Dom. It's mm. it was one of my favourite shows, and every now and again I'll watch an episode on YouTube. I thought it was spectacular. Well, Terry Jones, there you go. That might be a well. No, we've already done Fish Called Wonder, but that might be a fun episode of After Python. Doing doing everybody's best After Python, but we've done the crowd the piece de resistance of that series, which would be a Fish Called Wonder. So uh, we've shot ourselves in the foot there. Um, which takes us into uh, what's the change? Will, do you have any changes? Obviously, this is this is 13 of your top films, or at least 13 of your yes. movies that you've always wanted to do, blah, blah, blah. You love them. But there are changes, of course. And uh, and any any changes? Um, I, I think some of the, the graphics, some of the visuals have dated. Uh, I think it, yeah. Um, but I, there's not a lot I'd change. I think maybe some of the depictions of the future are a bit over the top oversaturated and it's a bit mm, i'm not sure where you're going there but no I, I i don't i don't really want to give it too many too many changes what about yourself i've got a couple um i don't like chris swanson i've called him unfunny bed guy i don't like him in any movie he's unfunny he is just he's one of adam Sandler's like best friends and he's just shit that's that He's, uh, is that, yeah. The blonde uh, guy who yeah. then wakes him up. Unfunny. Uh, the only funny line I think he has is, I've been watching you this whole time. That's just... 
Mm. Yeah. Not as funny as Tiptoes. And uh, remote... Uh, I'm sorry, is he surprised that all of the places are shut? He's going shopping in the middle of the night. Is he, Why couldn't he just wait until the morning? I um, do not... I know he's angry, but yeah. nobody is that angry that they need to buy the remote control that night. But he's, he's, got, he's got some chips. Got some chips. Someone smells like stale french fries. That was the worst Christopher Walken impression. I know that they need to have him realise what the c- control can do, but have him point at the dog and going, oh, keep the volume down is fucking stupid. And there is no way we around it. We yet to mention uh, Adam Sandler's very horny dog. Yeah, very two very horny dogs. And then they yeah. both... I, I that was quite funny, just a nice little running gag. I liked the dog that made the dog do the work. I thought that was very yeah. funny. <laughs> uh, um, the parents having sex, what sort of sick pervert is Christopher Walken that he is literally gonna bring him into the room where that's just sick, Mr. Walken. <laughs> um, and the fast forwarding through the sex, there's no easy way to say it. Kate Beckinsale is a very, very, very attractive woman. I don't think I would want to fast forward massaging her. I don't think that would be a chore. <laughs> There's no way around that comment. That's and I know that he has to fast forward it because then for when it goes on auto. But I don't know. Anyway, um, no man. He has all that far ready. All that far, just ready to go. Well, it, it, he he lives a very unhealthy diet, so he, he probably has got a lot of gaseous matter stored up there. Prior to last week, I didn't know that uh, that going to the bathroom could be more than a torturous experience. Where well, once <laughs> was a vacuous, is now more a slow migration. Uh, don't like it. So it was all a dream. That's bullshit. And also, so which is it? Is he really re- so? When he's when they when the cranberries are there, yeah. The, which I, I love I love linger at it. We, I should have mentioned that in soundtrack corner. It's a beautiful beautiful song about the cranberries, and 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 of course rest in peace, uh, the wonderful singer. She died very young, uh, unfortunately. Um, but uh, what was I going to say? What was I going to say? I got my messenger popped on. Um, yeah, the cranberries. She died very young, unfortunately. Jesus Christ, the Scottish, and. Uh, <laughs> No, that's the lovely Scottish woman named Eve. She doesn't listen, but anyway. And then um, the Cranberries, yeah, no, she died very, very young in her mid forties. That was horrible. But uh, so, which, so basically, when they're at the sort, when they're at the wedding, oh, yeah, and they go, oh, of all the songs, you know, it had to be this one. That which is, I, I, I don't know how to explain this, but they're there. The Cranberries are singing live. So, which is it? Is Adam Sandler so rich that he's got the cranberries to perform? Or are we supposed to believe that they're the house band, but they're not the house band because that we see the other guy who's singing like all the jazz standards and she's like, oh, of all this. And then he's like, oh, no. What a, you know, he, he like, I think, I, I think he, he organised it because he's uh, obviously architects are very, very nice people. Um, very wealthy. Um, no, he must have, but it's the fact that he doesn't know what's going on, does he? So that it's more of a surprise, I guess, because he was oblivious to the whole thing. I was going to say, and if he's been on autopilot for 40 years, surely he'd have forgotten the song again. Uh, he, he hasn't been on autopilot for 40 years, though, has he? Because he's... He has at that point, because the, oh, the, the, the fact that... Yeah, because yeah, he's... He has, he has the cancer in his, in his then... mind, it feels like a few days... So it's still fresh. Yes, but he's been on an autopilot. I also think if we literally talk about the poly- the, the actual science and all the actual <laughs> physics. Lo- physics of it, then we then it, there's just no point. <laughs> but he's no, but he has been on autopilot because he's been on autopilot because the, the when he joins the wedding, it's at the speech, which means that he's autopiloted through. The ceremony, so fuck you, Brandon, I guess. <laughs> Your ceremony wasn't fun. Um, and then he's woken up for the speeches and the cramble. This Scottish woman. <laughs> oh, no, this is Ava now. Uh, Jesus. 
Um, let's move on. The cranberries, the cranberries are wonderful. Rest in peace. Um, which takes us into uh, a few fun facts. It does. Because you don't have an alternate ending. Uh, but we do have a few fun facts. Um, here they are. Oh no, what's left from your notes? Anything left from your notes, Well, that, That's it from my notes. I talked about the uh, Thing 2 looking makeup. I, I also have here, I don't know whether it's intentional or not, but the, the scene where they talk about um, skipping a year of six months and a year of your life is literally shot for shots of the crimes and misdemeanors scene where he imagine where he's talking to the vision of the rabbi at night and with the red lighting about um god is a luxury i don't and god is a luxury i can't i don't have one of the greatest lines ever written which i think i've just gotten wrong uh god is a luxury i can't afford god is a luxury i can't afford um and i don't know whether that's intentional if it is intentional bravo thank you frank karachi uh if not who knows? The coin trick that Henry Winkler does in the movie is something the actor does in real life. During public appearances, Winkler will often do the trick for children. That's oh. cool. Yeah. Will, are you a Goosebumps guy? Uh, the books or the film? Um, I didn't mind the film, actually. But the, yes, the whole books, the TV series. I, think the kids. I, I read one book once as a child from, mm. from the library. Uh, in 1995, however, R.L. Stein wrote a very similar story in his Tales to Give You Goosebumps, with almost the same plot and setup, even down to the title, Click. Scholastic Inc. almost sued Sandler and the film's producers for plagiarism. Both parties agreed the entire situation was a coincidence, so no legal action was ever taken. Both stories could easily be based on the old French tale, The Magic Thread, in which a boy is able to pull a thread to, this, to speed up the parts of his life he doesn't like. He quickly finds himself an old man before being given a second chance. Oh, so, same. yeah. Uh, the little girl at the lakeside during Michael's flashback is Kate Beckinsale's daughter, Lily Mosheen. Um, is she married to Michael Sheen? Maybe, maybe it's, it's, it's a common, common nickname. No, I know, but that rings, that feels right to me. Michael. Sheen. No. Oh, wait, no. Wait. Uh, yes, Kate Beckinsale. I knew that was, yes. He was with Kate Beckinsale, 1995 to 2003. Oh, split up. Uh, yeah. And he's been with Anna Lundberg from 2009. Who's, 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 uh, and oh, and then since, <laughs> since uh, being with, uh, Michael Sheen, she has married and divorced Len Wiseman, uh, who was the terrible director of the fourth Die Hard movie, all the Underworld movies, which she was, of course, in, and the abysmal Total Recall remake. And But he is currently penciled in to make McLean uh, a new... A new, a new John McLean movie. Um, I mean, oh. I hope it's good, but Jesus no. Christ, uh, no. it's not going to be. Just leave, leave the best Die Hard movies alone. Die Hard Two, um, <laughs> uh, is no, it's Die Hard, but it, they, but it, Die Hard Two is excellent. Um, which takes us. Oh no, I still got more full facts, haven't I? I've still got some full facts. Uh, director cameo: Frank Caracci is the nurse who attempts to sedate Michael in the hospital, but sedates himself instead. Oh. Classic Hitchcock, uh, Karachi there for you. Uh, Will, you talked about the score. However, Alan Silvestri was attached originally as the film's composer, but left the project due to creative differences. <clears throat> oh, what must those have been? Who knows? And Morty is revealed to be the angel of death. Mortis is the Latin word for death and is the basis for such words as magician, rigor mortis, mortality, etc. <laughs> Uh, there's that's it really. There's not many fun facts oh, available. And one. tagline rundown. There's only one. What if you had a universal remote that controlled your universe? That's very dull and is just very the premise long. of the film. Yeah. That is literally it. So that's that, I guess. Tom's big question. I've got a couple. Talks about poor Rachel Dredge. Um, there's. Is he really going to take the remote to his architecture table? Uh. Yeah. Fair enough. Uh, and also, is it? I, I know the ending is what it should be, but I thought the ending was going to be he will, he does keep it 
And he's like, Walken's like, you're going to do the right thing. And I thought he was going to do what you said, like at the end of About Time, where he was only going to pause things and only going to rewind things and live things again. But there's temptation there. There's temptation. Temptation. Well, uh, you've, you've, you've got a bizarre, very eclectic, very diverse selection ahead of us. Uh, some I've never seen, some I have seen, some I've never thought of in 10 years. Um, what's, what's one that you've never seen that jumps out at you is uh, quite, it, it unnerves you. You're quite, oh, oh, okay. That's going to be an interesting one. Um, none really. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm excited to see Johnny English reborn because as a child, I loved Johnny English, watched that all the time. And you say that this is the superior sequel. Have you not seen it? I've never seen Reborn. And I haven't seen Johnny English in 15 years. So I'm going to watch right, Johnny English. Yeah. I'm going to watch both of them for, yeah, that, for our episode on Reborn. Reborn. Uh, you say is superior. Uh, yeah. Uh, very excited. I, I obviously love both Sherlock Holmes movies. Uh, we've recorded one of them already. Uh, Ratatouille. Uh, Great, 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 great film. I, I, I first Monster thinks my leaps and bounds favorite Pixar movie, which we oh, discussed on our Incredibles episode. I read a ranking the other day of all the Pixar films, and Monster Inc. was in the teens. That is disgusting. I, I, I think that baffling. <laughs> it was oh, it was terrible. I think Inside Out was it maybe number three. Um, <laughs> it was yeah, it was terrible. It was the the worst. I, I, it was re really bad, very I'm bad. Gonna um, it. I'm oh, going to say it. Coco was shit. Coco was number five. That's bullshit. But the, there are just what was Buster Zink's perfect, and it's not just because I have the biggest man boner for Billy Crystal in the world. I, I but Billy, my, Billy Crystal, Steve Biden, and Albert Brooks, uh, and Jerry Chase. I mean, we we, we I, we've done over a hundred. We've done over a hundred episodes now. People know who I like, uh, but. Um, Yes, I, I, I'd, I'd have to disagree firmly. Uh, but yes, no, Ratatouille is excellent and I look forward to rewatching it. Uh, the Prestige, I'm probably, I think we're, we're doing that because it's your favourite Nolan. I'd probably still say Dark Knight, but The Prestige is maybe his best film. One, I mean, we'll talk about it, once you know the twist. Because yeah. I think on a first watch, you go, that twist is bullshit. <laughs> Uh, but again, we will talk about it. And then we're delving into Ardman, uh, which yes. will be a lot of childhood returnings. I've never mm -hmm. seen Pirates, but I have oh. as, as a child. I know, I know. I've been told. Pirates, I've been told. It was during Hugh's sort of renaissance period um, when he did Paddington 2, Pirates. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was... Just those it, two things. <laughs> just those two. No, but it, Pirates is... You'll love Pirates. you love Pirates. Oh, very excited. And then, uh, and then, and then, <laughs> well, and then after you, not leave, but after that, uh, the most harsh tangent in the world, uh, a fortnight of Ardman into This Is England, <laughs> uh, followed by one of my favourite movies of the, 20, uh, 2000, of the 2010s, 45 Years, a very, very sad movie about old people reckoning with love and death. Um, so one hell of a double bill there, Curse the Weir Rabbit into skinhead racists into misery and depression uh, and then bridesmaids uh, but there's lots and lots of great stuff to look forward to as as we continue the year of 2022 oh dear is, is this 2022 now yeah yeah it's 2022 now oh yeah. wow wow yeah we've we've done the second annual quizathon do you think you win up you did did you do you think that you'll win again yeah one can help. Well, it's well, we've, is... got, we've got more players this time. Is there again? Yes, we will. We'll, we'll have, have more a, players a, a wider map to reach from. Yeah. yeah, we might not have the final game of. Well, we'll we'll know. We'll know by this. But the the, yeah. the viewers will have seen uh, who won and uh, if it was you again. Uh, in the meantime, will we end? What is the first thing you'd do if you had a universal controller? Um, I, don't make I it would, sad. Uh, pause everything. What is that? It? Is that it? Oh, oh, you would pause right. Okay. I, I pause, pause everything. 
and I'd I'd run around and and just like jump queues and go into places I'm not allowed to go and uh, and and maybe take a few things. Yeah, I probably steal as well. That's bad. Is it's not bad. I probably just yeah. go to H and B and just get all the Blu-rays. No, yeah, I I would steal. Yeah, because then we could just get it. all the money. We could just do all the money in the world. Yeah. Because you'd have the time. Because you couldn't go to a bank necessarily because, like, all that money is catalogued no. and all that. But you could go to yeah, everybody's house and just steal right? from everybody's wallets and just... Oh, you could. Just go all... Oh, and then and all that money. Yeah. Because you have all you the time in the world. A big shop. A big shop, um, get you. Yeah. Well, this is the thing. I've always thought, food in my, there. my thing has always been just, all. I'd get all the money in the world, pay off, buy a nice house up north, pay off the mortgage, and then just go back to working. But every penny I <laughs> own, I could then just spend. We're boring, aren't we? <laughs> we really are. We are too old for our bodies. Da ba da ba da ba da ba 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 